All right, so this is a uh, video of modifying a Vortec head uh, so that it will take these uh, ARP thread end studs. This is a 3 8 top, 7 16 bottom stud. I spent quite a bit of time online looking for information on how to do this. Uh, information is kind of limited and hard to find. Some of the information that I found was incorrect, which is why this is my second time through on this project. I originally had push-in studs on this head, and the studs were failing miserably with uh, roller rockers on there. Um, so I tapped these to put in these ARP studs, and looking at some of the information online, uh, most of the people failed to say that these bosses need to be turned down the thickness of this shank. Uh, because your original push-in studs sit on this surface here, and so when your rockers are on there, you've just got enough clearance to clear this with the push-in stud. When you add this flange for the bolt itself, you now have added almost three-eighths of an inch in height, and you need to machine that out of the head. Um, like I say, unfortunately, a lot of the sites are saying you don't need to machine these down unless you are putting pushrod retainers in your pushrod guides. Uh, that is incorrect. You do need to machine these for this clearance or your uh, rockers will not sit in the correct place. So unfortunately this cost me a set of head gaskets and another five hours to uh, add the engine almost all the way together before I realized that I needed to machine these down. So I get to pull it all back apart, machine it down, and uh, wash it up. Now there is a tool made by ARP and a few others for machining this down so you can do it in a drill press without it being accurate. That uses a mandrel that slides down inside of the hole and helps keep it square. So if you're using wood blocks to crib yourself up, it will keep it much more square. Uh, setting up on a mill, if you've got the skill and enough wedges and that, you can actually set this up. What I did is put the back edge of the head into the trench here so that it can't move backward. And that sets me linearly square to the bed. And then I just bolted down a set of shims here and kept shimming it until I got this plane square. Now, since my holes were already tapped, I was able to just put the uh, stud in one of the holes and then put a shank in here. I just put a half inch solid rod in here and lined that up with the side list. It's probably not perfect, but for what it's doing, it should work just fine. So once I had this cribbed level, then I'm able just to use a regular mill bit and mill these down. So it's working pretty well. For tapping these holes, once again, there's tools from ARP. You know, they're not too bad. 25 bucks, let's say, for the tools. Uh, what I had, I just tapped them by hand, and I had picked up this self-centering tap. Which, if you look at the tip of it, the very tip of it, uh, the first half inch, has no threads on it. So your original holes, as they were set up for the uh, push-in studs, this just set right down in there and pre-squares the tap so that you don't need to worry about being off. So even with these already being tapped, it's pretty tight. So I just used that to chase the first half inch of the threads and then changed over to a regular tap to finish it out. And that worked real well for tapping them. But what that did not do is, once again, if we go back and look at these studs, uh, the very last, because these were probably turned on a lathe, right where this finger is that's moving at the end here, you'll see there is a taper there. The stud is not tapped all or threaded all the way up to the nut portion of it. So you need to put a chamfer in here for clearance for that. Most likely that is made so that when you put your uh, pushrod guides in here, which are stamped steel of some sort, that chamfer will tighten into that tin and hold it in place. Problem is, if you're not putting those in, now you've got almost an eighth of an inch that the, th the stud won't thread in, because it's bottoming out on the top of your threads before it makes it all the way in. So we need to put a chamfer in there. And what I usually use for that is, once again, kind of a, a shop handy thing. Just one of these 45 degree uh, deburring tools. So once I've got this all milled down, right now I've got a few of them done. Once I'm done, then I'll come back, I'll recenter on the holes, put this in the drill chuck, 
and just give myself a 45 degree taper about an eighth inch deep on each of these. And that'll give me clearance for those threads. So, like I say, the information that is out there on doing these heads is relatively limited. But So I figured I'd put something out there of what I'm doing in my shop to try and avoid the hassle. Hopefully it'll help you out. Uh, you won't go through the hassle that I did of having your engine most of the way together and finding out you got to pull it back apart because you had the wrong information. So, no saying that my information is much better, but hey, there it is. Good luck with your projects and uh, hope they all work out for you.